This one, let's take a look at finding this limit. So the limit as x goes to positive infinity of the square root of x squared plus x minus x. So it's a bit of an unfold procedure. Let's take a look at it together. So the first thing to be observed is that if you plug like pretend for a second to plug infinity into this limit, then you would basically end up with something that looks like this, infinity minus infinity. You gotta handle this in some other way. So a way is to just work on this expression a lot. Take a look. This expression right here, I'm gonna rewrite it. So first I'm gonna say x squared plus x here minus x and you multiply this by a form of the number one so that it looks like this x squared plus x plus x without the root symbol there just x like that and then on the bottom here it's going to be also the same thing x squared plus x plus x so remember what i've just written there on the board is just a form of the number one right here let me fix this up so it looks better so this here is x now you multiply this out so on the top, you do that portion. You basically foil in the top. So you're going to do this. You're going to do this piece right here times that piece. It's going to give you x plus this quantity right here squared. So this times this, you can write there and you can square it. Then you multiply this times the positive x, for example. So that's going to give you here plus x times x squared plus x so again multiply this by this then I subtract from it. i'm going to multiply this by that again so it's going to give me minus x x squared plus x and then at the end i'm going to do negative x times positive x that's going to give me minus x squared just like that so this is just the top multiplied out in other words it's you can always imagine that back at step number three this is like over one and i just multiplied this top times that top. Let me fix this so it looks a little bit better. So a bit crammed. Okay. Once you have this multiplied out in the top, then you can cancel off. So for example, you see that like this piece and this piece have opposite sign. Other than that, they're the same. So you can cancel this with this. This piece right here, where it says x squared plus x, and then this is a squared again. Here you can do that as follows. This gets rid of the root symbol. So you end up with x squared plus x the two middle terms have canceled and then i'm doing minus x squared at the end so then when you do that remember this is just simplifying the top you haven't even touched the bottom yet so here and then this cancels with this and all that remains on the top is x okay so this is the top or the numerator so that allows us to say that at step number seven over here we have the following we have now x over so that's the simplified version of the top. And now remember this bottom right here. So you need to put that in there. You're going to have x squared plus x plus x this way. This is now has to be transformed by factoring. Some people call that forced factoring. So let's take a look at what I mean here at step number eight. Notice that I'm not even sticking the limit in there until the very end, until the expression has been prepared the right way. So you take that expression there from step seven, and I'm going to write it this way. Take a look. I'm going to put here, it's like x times one in the top, and in the bottom now it's going to be a rewritten version that says this. I want to be able to cancel with the x in the top. So I know that like back at step number seven, there's an x in this position. There's an x squared and an x. I need to pull an x from the root symbol somehow. So to do that, I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to put x squared plus and I'm going to rewrite the second fraction here, the x, as follows. I'm going to write that as x squared over x. Why can I do that? Think about it for a second. x squared divided by x gives back this x in this position. You see, that's why you can do that. So this x squared divided by x is equal to x. So what I did basically is this. I'm going to focus on this expression a little bit because it gets people a lot. So this expression. You have x squared originally plus x so i'm rewriting this as x squared plus and i'm going to multiply the top and the bottom by x so it becomes x times x over x and i know that i should do that because my goal is to factor x squared out when i multiply by x over x remember that's a form of the number one that's the only number you're ever allowed to multiply by in math by one right if you don't want to change the underlying expression so when i do that this is going to give me now x squared plus x squared over x you see and now that this and this have a shared term of x squared. So I just wanted to give you some additional detail on how to handle 
this portion right there. Okay, let's move on to step number nine. These are like additional details for parts of step eight, okay? So that's eight over here, additional detail. So at step number nine, remember back at step eight, we also had that extra X at the end like that. So that's back from step seven. You see there's an X here. We got to copy it over here. So when I do that at step nine, I'm going to now factor from the root symbol X squared. So it looks like this. Take a look. X squared. And I'm going to have here the following. When I pull an X squared out of here, we have one left. When I put an X squared out of here, there's an X in the bottom left. So it becomes one plus one over X like that under the root symbol. And all of this now is still over or rather under X times one. So these are separate. Let me be clear here, right? This is X times one. And here you still have that plus X at the end. We're getting closer now by a basic rule of roots. You can take this X squared out. So it becomes this. See that the root of X squared. Trying to be as detailed here as I know how to be, so it becomes this now. This second portion, 1 over 1 plus x, that's under its own root symbol, like that. Okay, and then you still need the x at the end. Still up here, you need the x times 1. All right, step number 11. Now, you take the root of the squared x. So it becomes like this now. x times 1 over x. Okay, and then you have this root here of 1 plus 1 over x. All right, erase this. It's a little too much. And then plus that x. Now you make this observation. This x and this x are shared between the two terms in the bottom. When that occurs, obviously, you can just factor it out. So it looks like this at step 12 up here. I'm going to pull that out, the x in the bottom. So it becomes x times 1. You pull that x in the bottom out like that. So what's left then within the parentheses is this expression. That's the 1 plus the 1 over x. And for the second piece, when you pull that x out, it's like x times 1 on the bottom, remember, okay? So the 1 is left over. So you're going to put here, for that reason, plus 1. Then you can cancel this off. And now you have a neat expression. So 1 over 1 plus 1 over x plus 1. Once this is in place, then you can take the limit. So the limit as x approaches positive infinity here of 1 over 1 plus 1 over x plus 1. Here, at this point, that could be extremely formal and distribute the limit operator to each term that I see. But I'm not going to do that because it would take too long. So instead, what I will do is pretend to just plug infinity into this expression. Pretend, okay? So basically it looks like this, 1 over 1 plus 1. In the bottom where you see x, you pretend to stick in infinity, like that, and then you put the plus 1. This can be simplified. 1 over infinity, that goes away. That's pretty much 0. So this term here goes to 0, and you end up with 1 over the root of 1 plus 1, which lastly at step 17 becomes 1 over 2. And that is the value of the limit. So thanks so much for watching. Leave a like. I hope this has been helpful. I've shown you as much detail as I know how to show. I'll see you in another video.